Yeah. But then we were within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going eight or nine minutes. Talk to Michelle. Hello, Michelle. This is Hank. Hi, Hank. How's it going today? It is great. Now, where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Orlando, Florida, and I've lived in Montana for the last 15 years. Now, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Oh, boy. Um, I make YouTube videos for a living. I started out doing that by myself um, and just sort of goofing off with my brother. And then uh, over the last 10 years, we've sort of like ramped that up to, to doing what, you know, one thing that we're really good at, which is making educational content. And, uh, and we make, make stuff uh, that hopefully makes people smarter and makes people think. Um, and that, that's really rewarding and, and like it's good to do the funny stuff that's sort of offhand and like whatever we want to do that day. But it's also really nice to have these more focused shows that, um, that are really about like, hey, we can provide some free resources to help people know stuff better. Yeah, how are you an expert in STEM? Um, I, once upon a time, was a biochemist, so I got my degree in biochemistry and worked in labs doing quality control for the most part. And, uh, then, uh, then we ended up, um, then I ended up uh, sort of going a different route and learning more about journalism and writing and creative writing. And that, like mixing those two things together has been a really great life's work for me so far, where I get to sort of say like, okay, I know a lot about science and I'm really passionate and interested in it. And I also have gotten pretty good at uh, communicating and, and also maybe making people laugh sometimes and uh, put those two things together, and a uh, good YouTube show. <laughs> now, where did you go to school? I went to school at Eckerd College in, uh, in Orlando, Florida. Or, no, sorry, in St. Petersburg, Florida. I grew up in Orlando. And, uh, and then I did my grad school in, here in Missoula, Montana, at the University of Montana. Now, what led you to Montana? Uh, school. Uh, I, come, I came out, I actually followed my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, uh, out to Montana. She was coming out to go to school here. I didn't love my job, and so I was like, I'll just get a job at a lab out there. And then uh, after a year of having varied success at that, I uh, went back to school and, and uh, here at the university. Now please tell me about your YouTube channel. Um, so Vlog Brothers is the channel that I do with John, uh, my brother, and we've been doing it for the last 10 years, almost 11 now, and it's, we make, we each make one video a week, so two videos a week on the channel, and it's whatever we're most interested in, so that might be like racism in the United States, it might be like a stupid song about Harry Potter, like it, it is great to be able to sort of follow what I'm interested in at the moment. Um, and then we have SciShow, which is a sort of news science show where we talk about whatever's happening in the news, in the science news world, but also things that have already happened that are very interesting and we would like to share with people. And then Crash Course is designed specifically to teach people who are late high school, early college, um, everything from chemistry to world history to literature to ecology. Like we are trying to basically cover anything that someone might take in those sort of transitional years of their education. What's the best thing about working with your brother? <laughs> What's the best thing? Uh, he keeps me in check. Um, I, uh, I, I have really big ideas and I like to go full bore and John is uh, more sort of like hang back, anxious, let's wait and see how all these things turn out before we uh, completely commit ourselves to them. So uh, while he sucked me into the online video game, uh, he has also helped keep me balanced and, uh, and make me uh, not make terrible decisions for my own future. But also it's just great to have a project with your adult sibling because I think a lot of times adult siblings sort of drift apart and don't have like that same tight relationship. And John, of John and I of course talk all the time because we run a business together and that allows us to also talk about other things really all the time so I know how his family's doing and I, he knows how my family's doing and I know what he's struggling with and um, you know we have that support. I was originally going to ask you what's the worst thing about working with him too but I'm thinking what you said. It's similar. For both. Yeah indeed. <laughs> <laughs> now what advice do you have to get people interested in STEM? Um, I like I 
I, this survey that Emerson did, the interest, like one of the most interesting stats from it for me was that 85% of people would rather do an unpleasant household task than solve a math problem. And what that says to me is we're, af we're like kind of afraid of this because it's something that we should know and we know that we don't. And we, like, there's all this anxiety around like, our, our education and, uh, and the tests that we had to take and not being good at the thing that we were supposed to be good at. And I think that if you could just look at that solving a math problem more as like a crossword puzzle, uh, like, like as uh, something to figure out rather than this like, like judgment on who you are, that's what I like. That's what I want, and I feel like we are so we're not good at that. I feel like we feel like math is judging us um, for not being good at it. But what I want to think about, and and this goes for all science and technology stuff, um, is to think about this as like this is part of the human process of knowing and learning more things and understanding the world and figuring things out. And to me, that's that's fun, and I think to most people it's fun. But unless you have the sort of tools to do it, it's just banging your head against a wall. So if we can sort of uncover the joy there, um, that's, for me, the biggest part. Please tell us more about the study. Um, so there's a bunch of things that Emerson, which is an engineering company, uncovered like 50%, only 50% of uh, parents feel very capable of helping their students with their math homework. That goes down to 41% when it comes to science. I think that comes from a lot of different places, but like, you know, not everybody's going to be spending all of their time learning a, like about how science has changed in the last 10 years or 15 years or 20 years since they since they were in school. Um, but uh, but I think that it's important to have that passion there, especially when you might be helping kids with homework, to know that you don't necessarily need to have all the answers. You need to be able to help them find the answers, and uh, and that. That's a process of like working through it and maybe going online and finding help and all of that stuff is is in itself also education. Like it's not just the like getting the right answer at the end, it's the getting to the getting to the right answer at the end. Now what should parents do if they feel ill equipped to help their kids with STEM? Um, I think there's a lot of great resources on the internet. I make good stuff. Uh, my name is Hank Green. You can Google all the things I do. But, uh, but there's also, uh, Emerson's put together a website at emerson.com slash I love STEM, which has a bunch of, not just like how to figure things out, but also how to get it, like what's interesting about it, what's cool. Um, and I should say that I think I did the URL wrong. It's emerson.com slash we love STEM. Um, and I, yeah, so I like, to me, yeah, it's, it's hopefully about being excited and interested um, and, and showing that off for yourself, uh, but also so that your kids see that enthusiasm. How do you think the Eclipse interested people in science? It's, like, great. It's, I, mean, I think it, it being able, like, with the fact that we were all ready for it to happen, which is also kind of an a achievement of science that we all knew that this was going to happen. And so everybody had their eclipse glasses, and everybody got, like, school programs around it, and um, you get to see this cool thing happen that's, like, like put, kind of puts you in your place a little bit, and you're like, yes, we are. This really is happening. This really is a planet around a star. Uh, with a moon around the planet, um, and especially for those people in the path of totality, like I think that that felt really, like special. Um, but you know, like I, I, and hopefully more people came out of that with a better understanding of how our solar system works. And I think that that well, I think that's definitely true. What can parents do to encourage curiosity in their kids? Um, hopefully, like hopefully, it's already there. I think that we find kids have innate curiosity. But what I want is for when a, a, a kid asks a parent, when, we, when my kid asks me uh, a question I don't know the answer to, or a question that humans don't know the answer to, to say like I don't know, let's try and find out. And if the ultimate answer is we don't know, that that's kind of fascinating in itself. Like it's that's great. Like knowledge isn't just bestowed down upon us in like a thing to memorize. It's a thing that humans figured out together. And, um, and, and so like an enthusiasm for that process as well as the information itself is really what I want to give to my son. Now please tell me about some pop culture references to STEM that make people interested. Yeah, I, I, like it's interesting to think about like like Comic Con and Big Bang Theory and like you know the show Bones. Like these are like examples of 
nerdy people that are extremely popular in pop culture. And I think that that's great because it gives examples of like for people to see like examples of nerds being nerds and, and, and loving it and having a like having a good life. Um, and you know, part of me sometimes is like, you know, like like shies a little bit away from uh, the nerd stereotype that we sometimes get in media because, of course, the the scientists I know are all kinds of things. They're musicians and they're rock climbers, and um, and they love like they they love punk music or they love classical music. It's just like all over the place, and for the most part, very eloquent, normal people, um, really great communicators. Uh, 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 off, oftentimes because I think that you need that to be a great engineer because it's not like you do any of these things on your own. It's a very collaborative work environment and uh, so sometimes I think that that like we get a little bit of the wrong idea from that stuff but I do like that it's become cool to be enthusiastic about things. Where can people learn more about you? I uh, learn more about me just by Googling me. Um, you can find more of my stuff by looking at Hank Green or Crash Course or SciShow. Um, we also have a bunch of my videos up at emerson.com slash we love stem. What do you like to do for fun? Oh gosh, what do I like to do for fun? I have a 10 month old child, so basically that. Um, he's very cute and playful and giggly, and so mostly rolling around on the floor with a baby uh, is, turns out, my favorite thing to do. I had no idea until recently. <laughs> How do you like people to connect with you? Um, I am on all of the social media, and it's a really uh, cool thing now that we're so able to so quickly interact um, with the people uh, who consume our content. And you know, when we, as soon as we upload a video, we get comments from people who are telling us what they think of it, and that's really extremely useful because it used to be that you had to make a show in complete isolation, and then the whole show was done before you knew what people were going to think about it. And now we get to always be evolving and changing and, uh, and know what people, what people think, what people like. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, I, I am terrible at asking myself questions. <laughs> well, I wish you luck. I look forward to checking out your site and enjoy your baby. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.